Hello, my friend. Yeah, today I want to talk about shoulds and wants. So, in my case, I have in my head also all sorts of ideas of what I should be doing right now. I should be promoting my song. I should be writing a newsletter. I should be working on some other things. I should, and then I should not do this and I should not do that. And um, these shoulds, they're very conflicting and uh, and the voice that speaks these shoulds is kind of a um, dominating, stern voice. You should be like, look at this. You will not end and and tries to push me or create fear inside of me, so I do what the voice wants me to do. And. Um, on the other side, there's what do I want? So what do I want to do right now? Right now I want to make this video. I can feel it. Like I feel comfortable in my body. I'm motivated. I want to share this with you. And before I wanted to play some songs and that like even though the voice, the shooting voice was like, no, I mean, Gotta get to work. So I make this important for myself because I believe living from my shoots, I will can never be truly happy or joyful or even content. I might succeed to a certain level in the world, if I am disciplined and follow my shoulds, I might gain some security, but then there will always be the other side of like, where, you know, like, as if I didn't do it for myself, but for somebody else, which is true, because I did it for this voice, this thought constructs. And these shoulds, they are our they come from, we learn them from our parents, our teachers, and then later from other people in society. And then at some point we have this voice internalized. And even if somebody doesn't tell us anymore what we should do, we constantly look out to make sure what, what is the right thing to do, you know, the safe thing to do. Now, in Radical Honesty, for example, we have an exercise where we say a firm no to these shoulds. One partner tells another partner, I should be doing this and this, and the other partner says no. You know, And so we learn, and then later on the other partner says this should back to us. You should be doing this and this, and you say no to your own shoulds. So the effect this has is to first learn to just say no, you know, like to see that following shoulds doesn't have a good outcome for our inner well-being. And then once we say no to the shoulds, only then is there the freedom to experience the body and the emotions that kind of, and then the, maybe the silence underneath that kind of um, show us what we actually want to do or show us what the path is. One important insight for me is um, the realization that even like following wants doesn't mean that I have to indulge all the time. Like I also want to clean my apartment. Like a part of me doesn't want to do it, like I'd rather chill out. But another par part, I also like to have a clean apartment. 
and I also want to work. Now, some work might be more inspiring, where the want is more alive and joyful, and other work might be less inspiring, and I still want to do it because I want to attain a certain goal or uh, earn some money. So the wants can be, there are many wants. Um, And another part of the should is the must. So if we tell ourselves, I have to do this or I must do this, this is like an even stronger version of the should. And uh, it's just not true. There's hardly anything that we must do. We choose to do it. Like not even, we don't even have to go to work. Like even me as a parent, I have three kids, I don't have to work. If I wouldn't work, um, I wouldn't be able to support my children financially. And that could lead to all sorts of problems, like might make life more difficult for the mother of my children, or, or then the state would maybe pay something. or So all sorts of consequences that I might not want would come out of that. And still, it's important to see that I want to support my children, therefore I want to work. It's not that I have to work, because then the power is within me. Like if we say I have to or I must, the power is out there. And even with the should, it's like somewhere in between. Most of the power is out there and in the world, in the voice that tells me what I should do. And I kind of like look at that voice like, oh, tell me what I should do. Whereas if we claim the things that we want to do as I want to, the power is here. Now the question, of course, is how to find out what do I want. And um, one thing is, as I said before, saying no to should, so that there's space to even investigate what I want. And then feeling, emotion. So our emotions tell us what we want to do. And that's not only when we're joyful and happy that that's a sign for wanting to do something but also when we're angry and we want to change something or when we're fearful and we want to create a safer environment it's like so all these emotions they lead to wants one tricky thing is that things that we want can turn into shoulds. For example, I want to work on a song, or I want to practice, or I want to do this video, and the first day I like doing it, the second day I like doing it, the third day I like doing it, and the fourth day maybe something like I'm tired and it's not, my body's not quite there, doesn't feel quite right, and then the head comes in and says, you should be doing this, like you and then a want that was joyful or had purpose can turn into a should. And so we can take the things that we really like doing, love doing, and turn them into our own misery somehow. And that's something to look out for everywhere, I guess. But And especially when working or when creating your own heart projects. Um, Do not let that want become a should. And oftentimes it's, n it's not a matter of absolutely not wanting to do this anymore. It's just that the body maybe at that very moment doesn't, is not right. And then forcing ourselves is no good. And it can be the same like with sex, for example, you know, or, or with other activities with your partner or friends. That um, in one moment something feels right and you're like, ah, I want to do this. Feels good. And then something might change in the next moment or next day and you don't quite want the same thing anymore. And then oftentimes we think we should. We should be wanting this because we wanted it yesterday, right? Or we wanted it five minutes ago. And that's really like how the mind 
overrides and like claims this life energy which the life energy is much more fluid and one moment like this one moment like that and there might be some undercurrents and some general preferences and goals and you can still flow in a direction but you're flowing you're not like a you know regimented current like the rivers in the cities and that's somehow so th what we do with the shoulds is we want to create more security like part of us is like if i adhere to the shoulds if i do what this shooting voice tells me everything will be all right i will be safe that's like an inner child part so it comes out of fear but it gets very tense and um yeah that's not as I said in the beginning, you might get some results in the outer world, but you will not get a joyful heart and an open and surrendered heart. Hmm. Yeah. Now, if you want to, you can spend a few moments in silence with me. Just noticing your breath and noticing maybe what thoughts or emotions are active right now after hearing me speak about shoulds and wants. And maybe you can, as if Posing a question to your heart, just ask yourself, what do I want? Uh, what do I want right now? And this can be an invitation for you to take this time, more often during the day, to close your eyes maybe, Take a few deep breaths and check in with yourself. What do I want? What does my heart want? Yeah. Thank you. 